Hey nerds, Farmer Jesse here. Got a great video for you all this week, focusing on contouring versus terracing at Sage Hill Ranch Gardens in California, where our buddy Spencer Rudolph has been experimenting with both of these things quite extensively. Spencer discusses design, construction, and pros and cons for both terracing and building beds on contour. So that's what we're gonna get into today. And it's gonna be great because Spencer is wildly knowledgeable. I think this is important information also because like throughout much of history, not all affordable farmland is even remotely flat. And Sage Hill serves as a potential model for market gardening on less than ideal terrain. Real quick, if you appreciate our work, consider supporting it by picking up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook or a hat or other merch from notillgrowers.com. That would be rad. Last note, I shot this video without a tripod, so I hope I, uh, no cinematographers die watching. Yep. All right, so with that, let's get to it with Spencer Rudolph of Sage Hill Ranch Gardens. Hi, I'm Spencer Rudolph, uh, owner-operator of Sage Hill Ranch Gardens. We're in Southern California, uh, about 30 minutes north of San Diego. I farm about uh, 4.5 acres, uh, and as you can see behind us, we're not on uh, flat ground. We started the farm in 2017. Um, we came in with uh, bulldozers and terraced in. Uh, we actually started at first not uh, realizing we were gonna be a farm, but we had this idea of what we wanted to do, and then uh, since then have become a, a full-fledged farm. Uh, yeah, so. Behind me, you can see how uh, we've come with, with tractors and terraced. Uh, one of the one things I think uh, when you think about terracing uh, on, on a slope is that larger terrace is going to be better than smaller. Uh, being the fact that for sy systems, it's easier to cover two rows instead of just one row. It's less material, uh, things like that. Here what's actually interesting is that we've done away with the center row. So generally this is a 10 foot wide terrace. We've actually removed the center row and made it one large bed. So this is now a uh, 60 inch wide bed. Uh, we were able to, instead of doing four rows of Salanova, we now get uh, 10 rows. Um, so each terrace, ideally they're uh, about 100 feet. Um, we'd like to keep it around that same system for up, throughout the farm. So you can see on, the, on, our, on our slopes here is that uh, we've actually intentionally seeded a New Zealand white clover. Uh, that was intentional. Uh, for uh, a couple different reasons. One, for weed management, uh, you'll see that it becomes a dominant species and actually um, chokes out any other weeds that kind of grow up through it. Uh, there's another other reason being that it's a nutritional factor, pulling in nitrogen out of the atmosphere, uh, which is fantastic. And then the uh, third is for uh, uh, erosion control too, which is really nice. It actually holds in a ton of uh, soil for us and uh, it's something that we, during summer, we have to chop back maybe every four weeks, but then after that, it gets real easy to manage. Uh, it takes about another four weeks to grow back up. Uh, usually whatever we cut back, we compost and make our own compost with, which is really nice. Um, has an aesthetic uh, beauty to it as well too, makes it nice. And actually during summer with the amount of uh, greenery, it feels cooler and it almost creates its own atmosphere, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but you can see it actually lines directly up underneath some of our stone fruits. Um, to me, which is a nice feature that it actually, it feels like we're connecting like what would be in like an underground vein throughout the farm. So it has this nice pull uh, through it. Yeah, birds love it. You know, birds kind of hang out in, within the trees, fly out into our terraces and uh, do a lot of the work for us. Um, primarily, we don't have too much of an insect issue at this point. And the farm is kind of at a working ecosystem where it's just kind of real fluid. Uh, we're putting plants in the ground and we're getting back what we put in, which is fantastic. You'll see it before we get stepped down into uh, our contoured uh, new part of our farm where we didn't do necessarily uh, terracing, but we did went more with the contour. Uh, the With the water management on this, is uh, being that it's flat, it makes it w a lot easier than where we don't have much runoff. It act generally just sits within the terrace and then saturates through. Uh, really nice. Uh, you'll see as when we step down into the contour, we run into a little bit of issue, issues of uh, heavy rainfall and what happens with that uh, water management and how it kind of tends to just build up within the aisles and then push through the beds. Actually, a pretty important point too is that when we do our terraces, we're not making them perfectly flat. There's actually like a two degree uh, slope within that 100 feet that actually the water will run ever so gradually out the end of the terrace. So it actually is not going through the sides or down off the sides or building up anywhere, it has a slight fall. And I think that's really important to note when setting up any type of terracing or even larger, these larger greenhouses like this one here, 
this is terrace in itself, but it's still, it's not perfectly flat. And that's one thing that you want to make sure that you have is a slight slope. If you're shaping soil, you want to make sure that you're not having a perfectly flat soil, but you're having a slight slope to have that drainage. Um, I can show you where we've done it too, too intensively, and I can show you where we've done it, uh, where even one side just being up just a slight, maybe even three to four inches creates a pooling effect within the terrace, and it creates an issue within the soil that you can, different ways of managing it where you can fix it if that becomes a problem too. In a wetter region, I would, like I said, I wouldn't do anything different. The one, the one thing I would maintain for sure, for sure is that very su subtle to slight degree of drainage. Um, I think that if it's too much it tilted in and too flat, you're going to have a real problem with the water's bit, like saturating the soil too much, and you're going to run into issues with uh, the you know the soil coming anaerobic and things like that under 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 the surface, which we've ran into too. We've, we've created a terrace where, like I said, having one corner be up five inches too much, the water just sits within the terrace and then the soil becomes anaerobic. And we had to put in um, tile drainage underneath it to fix the problem. Uh, which is, so it's like I said, it's all, it's all fixable. It's just, you know, if you're moving earth, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be putting on that degree of slope that's gonna be most suitable for growing produce. This is where we've now, instead of doing, we've opted out for, instead of doing large earth moving, that we wanted to come in and do more of a contour uh, bed alignment. Uh, so instead of, like I said, coming in and making flat rows with a uh, terrace, we've now gone with the angle of the, um, of this, of the hillside. It, so far it's been nice. What we did is we brought out a uh, laser level and found out where perfectly flat would be going uh, left and right within the contour of the slope. Uh, and that was just primarily for, uh, you know, management of moving compost and things like that and making sure that we're not walking uphill at a severe, you know, level. You can see it's probably from here to the top, which is uh, maybe 200 feet. It's probably increasing by 15 feet. Per se, I'd say. Uh, so it's actually a pretty steep slope, I would say. So going uphill would be a lot of work. And so just mainly for management, we wanted to go with contour. The one things that we're running into uh, during the winter months, so we've had this, had this for about 45 days now. And uh, within that 45 days, we've had two major rains, uh, one being an inch and a half. That what I've noticed is that the water actually builds up within our aisles and then finds the low spot and runs to where it wants to. Uh, so the one thing I've come up with and what might be uh, help manage it a little bit too is that maybe instead of being that we go laser perfect flat is that maybe what we do is angle it uh, just a slight foot or two up or down uh, and let that water run out the end of the bed. That might be helpful for management of it. Um, but at the same time too, that we're in Southern California that very well could be the last rain event we have for the year. Uh, and so this something that wouldn't have to take place until management for you know you know december or january of next year when we run it it's now april 1st so we run into that same uh the idea of going back to it then uh some of the things that we've kind of come up with is uh using straw waddles with mulch on the on the uphill side for any type of runoff coming from the main farm we're kind of like coming to this uh runoff point from the existing farm down into the new part. And so if we manage it by creating the straw waddle here, hoping facilitate run it down or slow it down. Um, what we've seen is that with the slopes, if you're on any type of steepness, if the water gains speed, it's definitely gonna remove a lot of soil and earth with it. Uh, so we're trying to avoid that. So the uh, other thing I've come up, uh, come up with that hopefully help kind of keep the earth in place without any type of movement um, is that I've, I seeded every other row uh, being uh, with buckwheat and hoping that that what it do is it'll one being I didn't get a chance to cover crop it'll actually add a little bit more life back to the soil but two also helpfully hold the soil in place during rain, rain events uh, and then the reason why it was every other row that way we could still get a cover crop in but still manage our rows and still be able to cultivate and get crops out without it being too excessive um, once that buckwheat comes comes to just before flowering or maturity, we'll come through with a hoe and chop it and just let it chop and drop in, this in, in place and then seed the next opposite rows going down from the top down again. And like I said, just adding a cover crop while still like getting a cash crop. And just see how it works. I uh, haven't done that before, but I've uh, read other growers doing it. I thought it was a pretty interesting time to trial it and thought it'd be nice to run and see how it goes. And then also what uh, we're noticing too is the uh, management of irrigation on such a severe slope too is that um, almost watering from the bottom up seems more intuitive because of the, the way the water's building. 
Um, so if you over irrigate at the lower section and then move your way up, it actually helps without having too much runoff coming down from the top down. Um, so what we found is that if you irrigating from the bottom up, it helps from the pooling because at the point this, it'll even pool during irrigation, which is pretty intense. Oh. Yeah, I think that, like I said, the ground's pretty tight. We also ran tractors over it, and that's another reason why for the buckwheat. And so we're just waiting for that. It's so fresh, you know, like I said, 45 yeah. days. You know, a lot of these crops, they look very mature, and that's because we're using a paper pot system, dropping them, and they're at, the, you know, their 30-day mark already. And then two weeks on top of that, you know, so. Yeah. Um, But that's the whole reason why for running the buckwheat too. So I'm realizing that it's a very tight and that the water staying very much so on the surface is that I want to uh, try to get more life and get some more roots down in the soil. All right, how awesome is Spencer uh, in that farm? Anyway, just a quick editorialization from me that I have found that same thing to be true of contouring or going across the slope, that the water tends to build up in the paths and rush over the bed, taking the soil or compost or whatever with it. I think a slight turn downhill is a good idea in his climate. Here, I now lean more and more towards pointing the bed straight downhill. In fact, we took an entire plot out of production and turned all of those beds downhill this past winter. Straight downhill or close to it. We don't have a water shortage here in Kentucky. It's kind of, I mean, if I'm being honest, it's often the opposite of that. So that's not as much of a concern. That water penetration and collection is critical in his climate. Notably, collection being something we will discuss soon with Spencer in another video. Anyway, we will put links for how to follow Spencer in the show notes. And again, you can expect to see more from him. So make sure you are subscribed. If you like these videos or any of the videos we do, consider picking up a copy of the Living Soil Handbook at notillgrowers.com or hat or other merch. Also consider joining us at patreon.com slash notillgrowers. Not only is that site the lifeblood of our work, but we also recently put up a post asking members what they'd like to see more of from our work in this channel. Being a Patreon member enables you to help make those decisions. Also, there are some new discount codes over there, which is also rad. That's patreon.com slash growers, or just hit that super thanks button. That works too. So super thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. We'll see you later. Bye. Key. Key. Key, key, key.